Well, fundamentally for me, it points to something I call as ecological literacy. Uh, water doesn't come from the tap. I mean, simple things like that. I mean, just because you have access to piped water, water is not coming from your water tank. And people don't think about these things. So cities grow unplanned, and then the government is either under pressure or makes the promise of giving pipe water to everybody. I'm so glad that cities around the country now in the last few weeks are facing a garbage problem. I, I, I really don't want this problem to be resolved because the solutions are not sustainable. And I think people who are creating this problem should experience the problem. I mean, how callous that for so many years we could dump this problem on other people in, in a democracy. So to me, fundamentally, it's about ecological literacy. And I mean, Asim and others have talked about the economics of it. I don't understand. I only have an intuitive sense of that. I think it's also a sense of local culture. Most of us are losing that sense of place, sense of culture, sense of nature. I don't know how many of us even are able to see a sunrise and a sunset these days. We live in urban conglomerates, you know, there's so much artificial lighting. We are worried about security. We light up our places all through the night, which there is an energy cost. You know, it's all linked and we don't seem to have a sense of that. And finally, a sense of respect and awe for nature. That nature is something that we are still trying to understand. And I don't think all of us at any point in time can say we understand nature. As long as we have that sense of awe and respect for nature and then try to work with rather than to master or against nature, I think solutions can always be found. Um, okay, um, building on uh, what my colleagues have said, um, I think, uh, and also in response to the question about whether, you know, simply increasing budgets and human power would be uh, the solution, uh, clearly not. I mean, the reason I gave that was not to actually therefore argue that, you know, there should be significantly more budgets and stuff. It was simply to you know, pinpoint the fact that a certain argument given at a certain point in time, even that within its limited logic has not actually worked. What we say, uh, what Asim and I say in this book is that uh, what we need is uh, a radical ecological democracy, which is uh, essentially a system uh, or a process or a, or a diversity of processes, not even one system, in which, first of all, people, all people, all of us in this room, but especially those who are uh, at the receiving end of the system right now, have the right power and ability and capacity to take part in day-to-day decision-making in things that are affecting their lives. So that democracy is not simply about me going once in five years and voting somebody into power and then hoping that that person will do the right thing for me, but actually being able to take part in the decisions that are impacting my lives. I may choose not to do it, but I should at least have the right and the capacity to do it. That is a much more radical or deep democracy than what we have in India today. Okay, but a number of organizations, a number of communities are actually already showing that that's possible. There are villages which say, sorry, everything to do with this 2000 hectares in our village is going to be decided by the Gram Sabha, not by some government officer sitting somewhere else, whatever, whatever decisions they take, they'll have to take sitting with us in the Gram Sabha. Um, similarly, with urban em uh, empowerment, using the 74th Constitution, uh, 74th uh, Commandment of the Constitution, in Bhuj town, for instance, uh, citizens, including especially in the slums, are saying, how do we take control over our own lives by making sure that things like water, energy, housing, food are within our control? And we don't have to depend on uh, fickle government or corporations or whatever uh, it is. And so building the governance institutions, which can be, for instance, a decentralized water committee that manages the water for that particular basti, or uh, larger level uh, area sabhas and things like that, uh, building those grassroots institutions uh, and then actually looking at uh, combining them, linking them across larger landscapes. Okay, which are which are in many cases even ecologically defined, such as for instance a parliament, an, uh, a water 
uh, river basin parliament in Rajasthan called the Arvari uh, Basin, which uh, Anil ji was very instrumental in, in helping to form. So, uh, where, you know, 70 villages get together and decide all the matters relating to that 400 square kilometers of a river basin. Here's another institutional. So, you build those sorts of governance institutions, which are really bottom-up, truly bottom-up. But, of course, then one also needs to have the larger levels of institutions at st state, national, and global level. Even the nation, nation and the nation state as and the boundaries at some point or the other, I think we need to start challenging those also. Now, that's a huge debate. I don't want to get into it necessarily. It's very provocative. But, uh, I mean, I think uh, we need to seriously actually even look at that. If you want ecological sustainability to be, I mean, why why should there be, for instance, a dividing line uh, within a river basin that is cutting across Bangladesh and India, as an example, right? So, anyway, <laughs> that's, that's much larger. But I think these are the sorts of governance uh, changes that are needed in the long run. And so the budgets and thing was actually only a short term kind of a thing. Um, yeah, and that also relates to what you're saying is the sort of micro level models that have existed in the past. But I think we should be careful. And this is the last point I'll make, Sunita. Mm -hmm. We should also be very careful that a lot of what has existed in the past and in some cases continues is not necessarily by that fact itself automatically acceptable today. Uh, a lot of micro systems had enormous social inequalities, for instance, gender inequalities, caste inequalities, etc., etc. We need to actually look at the kinds of changes, reforms that are needed in that while not losing sight of the fact that it is that decentralized unit which needs to be the basis of a future uh, sustainable society. Thank you.